Well, good evening, dudes and dudettes. It is I, Dead Voice McGee. I'm here to tell you that, uh, yeah, it's a bit of compilation. Will out my voice for a bit. Can't really do anything right now. So I hope you enjoy a fun fact with Discord. Binge comp. Okay, bye bye. Gosh golly, I hope you're all ready for some more fun facts with Discord, even though I'm running out of numbers and fun ways to open it. I'm just very tired and I got blood dry and I just got exhausted and just. I'm just gonna fall asleep right here. Okay, I gotta do this. I gotta do this show. Okay, here we go. The British accent we have today wasn't around when America was founded. Instead, Americans inherited the old British accent, while the Brits were left to continue to gain a new, more distinct accent of their own. I can only imagine how that went down. Alright, fine, you keep your stupid accents. We'll make better ones that are more refined with scotch and women and men. And maybe people that don't define themselves on the two genders. <laughs> the oldest instrument ever found was a flute, found in a fresh, high-resolution carbon dating examination that revealed the age of 42,000 to 43,000 years from the Geisinclerystal Cave. I believe that it was made from the bone of an eagle. Ew. Well, that's fancy. Probably sounded like a recorder, but it sounds fancy. Okay, I found this out today in history class and I find this hilarious. Okay, here we go. A guy from New York sent Andrew Jackson a 1,400 pound wheel of cheese. Jackson shared the block of cheese with the public and this wheel lasted for several months. The people of the White House grew tired of it and Jackson invited some of the public into the White House and the people finished the cheese. The next president in turn complained about the smell of cheese throughout the White House and people reported that they could smell the cheese from blocks away. This cheese wheel's lifespan was not brief. This was a two-for-one deal here, fun fact and a dad pun. I hope you're happy with yourself, Mr. Wiffy! An iPhone game called Send Me to Heaven, which scores players on how high they can fling their iPhone into the air. The creator said he had hoped to have people shatter as many iPhones as possible. Apple banned it for encouraging behavior that could result in damage to the user's devices. This is like the people that told you that you could charge your iPhone by putting it in their microwave. Why? Why do we gotta fall for these shenanigans? There was a man named Jon Snow. <gasps> However, he was born into a coal yard worker in York, England in the 1800s and was a minor prodigy of his time. He was a well-learned doctor collecting all medical degrees available. John was the founder of the study of epidemiology and helped stop cholera in London. He even laid the work for the proper use of anesthesia because back then, doctors simply soaked a rag in chloroform, crossed their fingers, and tossed it into a patient's face. I guess you could say this Jon Snow knew a lot of things. There exists a game that is lost media, but also not lost? Question mark? The game is The Quick Brown Fox Jumps Over the Lazy Dog, an edutainment game by the legendary cult classic creator Asamu Sato. You probably know him as the guy behind Ella's Dream. And it is for the PC slash Macintosh. Only about nine copies are known to exist, including Asamu Sato's copy, which he lost. While people are known to own the game and to be active online, they are unwilling to archive the game by ripping its ISO for fear of damaging the disc. The hunt is still going on to find a copy that can be archived, though some of the owners of the games have been courteous enough to upload some footage of the game in the meantime. Imagine having a game that you were afraid of damaging because there's only like 10 of them. That's too much for me, man. Mark Twain traveled extensively and once said, Travel is fatal to prejudice, bigotry, and narrow-mindedness. And many of our people need it sorely on these accounts. Broad, wholesome, charitable views of men and things cannot be acquired by vegetating in one little corner of the earth. Man, that is some pretty solid advice. The 1927's movie Metropolis, although now acclaimed being a pioneer of sci-fi movies and part of the UNESCO's Memory of the World Register, initially it got mixed reviews. They acclaimed the art direction and the special effects, but it was criticized for the story. Even a critic called the story as silly. <gasps> and in later presentations, they cutted scenes. <gasps> the original preview was 153 minutes. Then it was cut it so many times in different years. The shortest cut was from 1984 with 84 minutes. 
and it was the most poorly received cut due to the many modifications of the movies, like using songs instead of the traditional score. It even got nominated with two Raspberry Awards for Worst Original Song for Love Kills and Worst Musical Score. And a 2001 reconstruction cut was 124 minutes. In 2008, in Argentina, it was found a damaged original cut of the movie in a museum. And with a long restoration process that required additional materials provided by a print from New Zealand, the film was 95% restored. And that new cut, named The Complete Metropolis, has 148 minutes. And now you can buy the Blu-ray of The Complete Metropolis on Amazon. So if you want to go see this beautiful movie that was groundbreaking for sci-fi that was called Silly, you gotta go through Jeff Bezos and his weird goofy face. Thomas Jefferson was afraid of public speaking. He had terrible stage fright, added accent marks to his copy of Declaration of Independence in case he ever had to read it out loud, and often faked illness to avoid giving speeches. He was so opposed to public attention that about 20 pages into his own autobiography, he complains that he's already tired of talking about himself. So take heart, my awkward introverted friends. Even you could be a president. Although you probably wouldn't want to be, it's a, lot, it's a lot of pressure and activity. The sky is blue due to the elements that make up our atmosphere, which are responsible for a certain scattering of light that results in blue. Due to air pollution though, scientists theorize that eventually the sky will be a different color because of particles affecting the way the light scatters. Your great, great, great grandchildren may look at a sky you will never see. I don't know, I kind of like blue, so can we not pollute the earth anymore? Because I really like the color blue. Please stop. <laughs> Finally. Despite the fact that George Washington was a rather tall man with an absolutely commanding presence, he was actually described by his contemporaries as having a deep yet soft-spoken, almost weak and breathy sounding voice. This is thought to be the most popular theory as to what he sounded like, as he had numerous problems with his respiratory health, diphtheria, epiglottitis, tuberculosis, pneumonia, and quincy infection of the tonsils, as well as very famously bad teeth. Coupled with a very reserved manner, it was said you need to pay close attention to actually hear him. And yet, in my goofy videos, I made him sound like a pompous Patrick Stewart. So now, don't I feel the bad! You probably should, you weak-ass bitch. Oh god, George Washington, I'm sorry! Send me down the river, Styx, cause it's fun facts with Discord number 26. There has only been one person who has held the rank of six-star general for the entire existence of the United States, making him the highest ranked officer in the American army. That man being good old George Washington. I imagine that's more of an honorary thing. But I gotta imagine there's some five-star generals that are just sitting there sobbing, going, I'll never be as good as George Washington! Your hair is made of what you've ingested. This means that if someone takes a hair sample, they can see if you've had drugs in the past six months to three years, depending on your hair length. Well, good luck doing anything with my hair. You're only gonna find traces amount of caffeine. <laughs> and minor amount of antidepressants. Christopher Columbus wasn't actually the first to theorize that the Earth was round. The fact was figured out long before Columbus came into the picture. People just figured that there was just a vast empty sea between Western Europe and Eastern India slash China. And it would be suicide to try to make the voyage. Columbus was just arrogant enough to try anyway and thus stumbled upon the New World. Additionally, he took credit for first sighting the New World when he actually didn't. It was one of his sailors. What a just like a captain taking credit for all the peons work. I think Christopher Columbus wasn't that great of a guy anyway, so I'm not surprised. Billy Joel never sells front row seats in order to see the real fans right in front of him. He gives them away to random people in cheap seats so that the front row isn't always just wealthy people. That's why, I mean, Billy, what if there was actually a true fan who was wealthy, you could not let them get the front row seat that they probably worked hard in getting? Hey, did you ever think about that, Billy? I'm just kidding. You do you, buddy. There was a man named Torare who was often called the hungriest man in the world. He did many exotic things while in a hospital for a period of time, including eating a whole eel, bones and all. Look up an eel skeleton. But the final kick to the bucket was when he ate... <clears throat> well, you, you, you let your imagination decide. It's not good. Well, if you don't want your imagination to decide, you can actually check out Salmonella's video on it. It gives the whole story of Torare. Dude was weird. Ancient Rome and China were well aware of each other's existence through trade, specifically the trade of silk. In fact, China actually tried to send envoys to Rome in hopes of establishing better contact. 
This diplomatic mission to the literal other side of the world was thwarted by the Persians, who convinced the envoys that once they passed Persian territory, it would take another two years to reach Rome. The Persians did this in fear that the Chinese and Romans would work out a trade route that would completely bypass the Middle East, thus cutting them out of the incredibly lucrative silk trade. Then I imagine in the future, as soon as they saw planes and ships that can bypass them, they were like, oh, come on! During the days of Prohibition, illegal homemade alcohol was marked in jugs with certain numbers of X's. Each X represents one distillation. So if the jug had three X's, the alcohol was distilled three times. And you better be careful if you buy alcohol that's been distilled any less, because less distillation means more ethyl alcohol levels, and therefore, more toxicity. The actual kind, not the fandom kind. One distillation would be akin to drinking acid. In 2013, it cost, whoa. $289,500 a year to run a hot dog cart near the Central Park Zoo in New York City. I swear to God, if I think about this hard enough, I'm gonna start walking directly into the ocean. 100% chance things in Pokemon Gen 1 are not 100% chances. Yes, this means your Master Ball has an approximately 1 out of 256 chance of failure in Gen 1. This is due to an error in the program, where the code to determine if a move lands uses a standard greater slash lesser than instead of a greater slash lesser than and equal. All right, time to use this master ball and catch the abomination that is Mewtwo! Well, I don't think so. The movie Shrek, oh no, went through several voice actors for the main character before the movie was launched. Spielberg originally wanted Bill Murray to do the voice, but eventually hired Chris Farley in 1996. The role was recast in 1998 with Mike Myers who insisted on a complete rewrite of the script so as to leave no traces of Farley's version of the character. In 2000, Myers had completed recording his lines, and after viewing a rough cut of the movie, asked to completely redo Shrek's dialogue again, this time giving the ogre his iconic Scottish accent. The reason for this was, end quote, there is a class struggle in Shrek between the fairy tale kings and queens and the common people. I always thought that Shrek was raised a working class, and since Lord Farquaad was played English, I thought of Scottish. They scrapped nearly four million dollars of animation because of this, but in the end, it paid off. Now this is weird. Okay, so you can actually look up one of the rough animatics with Chris Farley's recordings done with Eddie Murphy, and Eddie Murphy's recordings are actually put into the final movie. So it's weird to think that Eddie Murphy's responses were to the Chris Farley Shrek and not Mike Myers Shrek. Isn't that weird? The comedy film My Cousin Vinny, about a lawyer who just passed the bar after multiple failed attempts but still takes on his cousin's murder trial, is shown in law schools as an example of good and bad trial work. One scene in particular, where a public defender asks how a witness could be sure what he saw if he wasn't wearing his prescription glasses and is humiliated when it turns out they're store-bought reading glasses, is used to show the important rule of trial law. Never ask a question if you don't already know the answer. That shouldn't be a lawyer thing, that should just be common knowledge right there. Or as maybe as Detective J.J. Bittenbinder calls it, STREET SMARTS! And a ding dang final is... In the Kirby Right Back At You series, Kirby once threw a monster into the sun on a frying pan and the monster came back fully cooked in a matter of minutes. This means he threw multiple tons, counting the papon and the ridiculously sized frying pan at Mach 73. Yet with that strength, people still question him surviving the prelude of World of Light. And he took the joke I was gonna make. Good job, Ponky Kong. God, I hope you're happy with yourself. Well, I hope you're gosh totally darn ready because it's Fun Facts with Discord number 27. Mm -hmm. What the frick voice was that? The sandbox tree, also known as the dynamite tree, is covered in spikes full of poison and grows exploding fruit. I want, I want to touch it. Dark Dungeons is a movie based on the chick track about how playing D&D can turn someone into a cultist? Question mark? Jack Chick himself actually gave the makers the approval to make the movie from his track. Ironically, the movie itself is a parody and contains a lot of memes. Now, if you don't have the time to watch the full movie, luckily, Mr. John Shrongefars actually did a review on it a couple years ago. And, uh, yeah, it's, a, uh, it's pretty bad. But so bad it's good. The reason dogs love their squeaky toys so much is because the sound reminds them of a tiny animal being killed. Oh. A child plagiarized a story from a well-known Destiny's Lore website, the Ishtar Collective, for his English homework. 
The teacher noticed it and contacted the website's Twitter account that temporarily changed their name to the boy's name. <clears throat> you cheated not only the game, but yourself. You didn't grow. You didn't improve. You took a shortcut and gained nothing. You experienced a hollow victory. Nothing was risked and nothing was gained. It's sad that you don't know the difference. In the game Skyrim, if you somehow kill Sissel or Brit, like mods or whatever, their father will send you a thank you note for killing them? Well, that's because the game will always have a letter sent to you to whoever that person hates is killed. In the creation kit, you'll see that Lenkil, the father's, relationship to his two daughters is a negative one. And these are the only two he hate in town. Well, that being the case, I almost kind of want to find Lemkill and kill him too in the game, if that's how he feels about his daughters. In Life of Brian, the scene where Pontius asked what's funny about Biggest Dickus, the extras were told that they wouldn't get paid if they laughed. All the laughing you hear in that scene is genuine. It's a risky move, but it was worth it. Awesome. Biggest Dickus. <laughs> One of the most widely used and abused drugs in global circulation is a natural pesticide and is often self-described necessary and beneficial effects. It is used by almost all age groups across all wage gaps, across all race, creeds, sexes, and orientation. And you probably have it in your home right now. This drug is caffeine. Bill! Bill, 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 I don't, I, I don't appreciate this call out post right now. How dare you? No, 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 no. Stop it. I might have already talked about this one, but I don't care because it's still cool. Mantis shrimp have almost four times as many color detecting sensors in their eyes as humans and are able of seeing colors of light on the spectrum into infrared and ultraviolet. Hey, Google, how do I surgically replace my eyeballs with mantis shrimp eyeballs? Playing mantis shrimp videos on YouTube. That's not what I asked. A rodent that was believed to be extinct for 113 years casually showed up on the handrail at the front porch of an eco-lodge in Colombia and let researchers photograph it for two hours before disappearing into the night, after which it was never seen again. It's called the Red Crested Tree Rat. Oh, look at it. It's adorable. The South Park song Kyle's mom is a this skit has essentially killed off the use of Kyle as a baby's name in the U.S. In 1998, the year before the South Park movie came out, Kyle was the number 24 baby name, having held steadily for the previous 15 years at around 18 to 29. By 2000, it had dropped to 37, and as of 2019, it is number 283. <sighs> Thanks, Cartman. And a ding dang final day. Keurig coffee maker and co-inventor John Sylvan went to the ER reporting tunnel vision and heart palpitations. Oh no. After a few tests, the doctors had no clue, so they asked questions like, how much coffee do you drink? To which John replied, 30 or 40 cups a day. The diagnosis was caffeine poisoning. Dude just wanted to feel the color purple. I don't blame him. 